You must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Les Brown It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. People will enjoy the show. Don't be weak in front of them. The essence of philosophy is that a man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. Epictetus You don't notice your progress in life because you are always raising the bar. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. Our own life has to be our message. Thich Nhat Han. For how long will you put off demanding of yourself the best and never to transgress the dictates of reason? You have received the philosophical principles to which you ought to agree and you have accepted them. What sort of teacher are you waiting for, that you put off improving yourself until they come? You are no longer a child, but a grown adult. If you remain negligent and lazy, always piling up delay upon delay, fixing first one day, then another, after which you will attend to yourself, you will fail to make progress without even realizing but will continue to live as someone uneducated until you die. 2. From this moment, commit yourself to living as an adult, as someone who is making progress, and let everything that appears best to you be a law that you cannot transgress. And if you are presented with anything laborious, or something pleasant, with anything reputable or disreputable, remember that the contest is now, that the Olympic Games are now, that it is no longer possible to put them off, and that progress is won or lost as the result of just once giving in. 3. This is how Socrates attained perfection, by paying attention to nothing but reason in everything that he encountered. But even if you are not yet Socrates, you should live as someone who wishes to be Socrates. Emotion, which is suffering, ceases to be suffering as soon as we form a clear and precise picture of it. A blind man is a poor guide until it gets dark. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Plato Remember, health is another form of wealth. Take care of your body. An optimist is a person who sees a green light everywhere, while a pessimist sees only the red stoplight. The truly wise person is colorblind. When you put faith, hope, and love together, you can raise positive kids in a negative world. Zig Ziglar Then is the soul as Empedocles doth liken it, like unto a sphere or globe, when she is all of one form and figure, when she neither greedily stretcheth out herself unto anything, nor basely contracts herself, or lies flat and dejected, but shineth all with light whereby she does see and behold the true nature, both that of the universe and her own in particular. Sometimes things are falling apart. They may actually be falling into place. You become what you think about. All the gold which is under or upon the earth is not enough to give in exchange for virtue. Plato
time is money. Love your enemies, for they tell you your faults. Let the beauty we love be what we do, Rumi. To find out and set to thyself some certain way and method of contemplation, whereby thou mayest clearly discern and represent unto thyself the mutual change of all things, the one into the other. Bear it in thy mind evermore, and see that thou be truly well exercised in this particular. For there is not anything more effectual to beget true magnanimity. The cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing. I have just three things to teach. Simplicity, patience, compassion. These three are your greatest treasures. By practicing self-discipline and devotion, you can transcend the cycle of birth and death. Bhagavad Gita Live in reality as it is, not as you wish it was. When a person spends all of his time in foreign travel, he ends by having many acquaintances but no friends. The key to success is to focus our conscious mind on things we desire, not things we fear. Brian Tracy How magnanimity is consistent with care. Things themselves are indifferent, but the use of them is not indifferent. How then shall a man preserve firmness and tranquility, and at the same time be careful and neither rash nor negligent, if he imitates those who play at dice? The counters are indifferent. The dice are indifferent. How do I know what the cast will be? But to use carefully and dexterously the cast of the dice, this is my business. Thus in life also the chief business is this. Distinguish and separate things and say, externals are not in my power. Will is in my power. Where shall I seek the good and the bad? Within in the things which are my own. But in what does not belong to you, call nothing either good or bad, or profit or damage or anything of the kind. What then? Should we use such things carelessly? In no way. For this, on the other hand, is bad for the faculty of the will, and consequently against nature. But we should act carefully, because the use is not indifferent, and we should also act with firmness and freedom from perturbations, because the material is indifferent. For where the material is not indifferent, there no man can hinder me, nor compel me. Where I can be hindered and compelled, the obtaining of those things is not in my power, nor is it good or bad. But the use is either bad or good, and the use is in my power. But it is difficult to mingle and to bring together these two things. The carefulness of him who is affected by the matter, and the firmness of him who has no regard for it. But it is not impossible. And if it is, happiness is impossible. But we should act as we do in the case of a voyage. What can I do? I can choose the master of the ship, the sailors, the day, the opportunity. Then comes a storm. What more have I to care for? For my part is done. The business belongs to another, the master. But the ship is sinking. What then have I to do? I do the only things that I can. Not to be drowned full of fear, nor screaming nor blaming God, but knowing that what has been produced must also perish. For I am not an immortal being, but a man, a part of the whole, as an hour is a part of the day. I must be present like the hour, and past like the hour. What difference then does it make to me how I pass away? 
whether by being suffocated or by a fever, for I must pass through some such means. This is just what you will see those doing who play at ball skillfully. No one cares about the ball being good or bad, but about throwing and catching it. In this, therefore, is the skill, this the art, the quickness, the judgment, so that if I spread out my lap, I may not be able to catch it, and another, if I throw, may catch the ball. But if with perturbation and fear we receive or throw the ball, what kind of play is it then? And wherein shall a man be steady? And how shall a man see the order in the game? But one will say, throw, or do not throw. And another will say, you have thrown once. This is quarreling, not play. Socrates then knew how to play at ball. How? By using pleasantry in the court where he was tried. Tell me, he says, Anitus, how do you say that I do not believe in God? The demons, who are they, think you? Are they not sons of gods, or compounded of gods and men? When Anitus admitted this, Socrates said, who then, think you, can believe that there are mules but not asses? And this he said, as if he were playing at ball. And what was the ball in that case? Life, chains, banishment, a draft of poison, separation from wife and leaving children orphans. These were the things with which he was playing. But still he did play and threw the ball skillfully. So we should do. We must employ all the care of the players, but show the same indifference about the ball. For we ought by all means to apply our art to some external material, not as valuing the material, but whatever it may be, showing our art in it. Thus, too, the weaver does not make wool, but exercises his art upon such as he receives. Another gives you food and property and is able to take them away and your poor body also. When then you have received the material, work on it. If then you come out without having suffered anything, all who meet you will congratulate you on your escape. But he who knows how to look at such things, if he shall see that you have behaved properly in the matter, will commend you and be pleased with you. And if he shall find that you owe your escape to any want of proper behavior, he will do the contrary. For where rejoicing is reasonable, there also is congratulation reasonable. How then is it said that some external things are according to nature and others contrary to nature? It is said as it might be said if we were separated from union. For to the foot I shall say that it is according to nature for it to be clean. But if you take it as a foot and as a thing not detached, it will be fitted both to step into the mud and tread on thorns, and sometimes to be cut off for the benefit of the whole body. Otherwise, it is no longer a foot. We should think in some way about ourselves also. What are you? A man. If you consider yourself as detached from other men, it is according to nature to live to old age, to be rich, to be healthy. But if you consider yourself as a man and a part of a certain whole, it is for the sake of that whole that at one time you should be sick, at another time take a voyage and run into danger, and at another time be in want, and in some cases die prematurely. Why then are you troubled? Do you not know that as a foot is no longer a foot if it is detached from the body, so you are no longer a man if you are separated from other men. For what is a man? A part of a state, of that first which consists of gods and of men, then of that which is called next to it, which is a small image of the universal state. What then must I be brought to trial? Must another have a fever, another sail on the sea, another die, and another be condemned? Yes, for it is impossible in such a body, in such a universe of things among so many living together, that such things should not happen, some to one and others to others. It is your duty then, since you are come here, to say what you ought, 
to arrange these things as it is fit. Then someone says, I shall charge you with doing me wrong. Much good may it do you. I have done my part. But whether you also have done yours, you must look to that. For there is some danger of this too, that it may escape your notice. May your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. Life is a race against time, so have a good time. Don't allow yourself to be heard any longer griping about public life, not even with your own ears. Marcus Aurelius For it is better to be alone than in bad company. Things won't happen in a certain way just because you want them to happen that way. In the absence of orders, go find something and kill it, Jocko Willink. Against the quarrelsome and ferocious, the wise and good man neither himself fights with any person, nor does he allow another, so far as he can prevent it. And an example of this, as well as of all other things, is proposed to us in the life of Socrates who not only himself on all occasions avoided fights, but would not allow even others to quarrel. See in Xenophon's symposium how many quarrels he settled, how further he endured Thrasymachus and Polus and Callicles, how he tolerated his wife, and how he tolerated his son, who attempted to confute him, aid to cavil with him. For he remembered well that no man has in his power another man's ruling principle, he wished therefore nothing else than that which was his own. And what is this? Not that this or that man may act according to nature, for that is a thing which belongs to another, but that while others are doing their own acts as they choose, he may nevertheless be in a condition conformable to nature and live in it, only doing what is his own to the end that others also may be in a state conformable to nature. For this is the object always set before him by the wise and good man. Is it to be commander of an army? No. But if it is permitted him, his object is in this matter to maintain his own ruling principle. Is it to marry? No. But if marriage is allowed to him, in this matter his object is to maintain himself in a condition conformable to nature. But if he would have his son not to do wrong, or his wife, he would have what belongs to another not to belong to another. And to he instructed is this, to learn what things are a man's own and what belongs to another. How then is there left any place for fighting to a man who has this opinion? Is he surprised at anything which happens, and does it appear new to him? Does he not expect that which comes from the bad to be worse and more grievous than what actually befalls him? And does he not reckon as pure gain whatever they may do which falls short of extreme wickedness? Such a person has reviled you. Great thanks to him for not having struck you. But he has struck me also. Great thanks that he did not wound you. But he wounded me also. Great thanks that he did not kill you. For when did he learn, or in what school, that man is a tame animal, that men love one another, that an act of injustice is a great harm to him who does it? Since then he has not to him who does it. Since then he has not learned this and is not convinced of it. Why shall he not follow that which seems to be for his own, your neighbor has thrown stones? Have you then done anything wrong? but the things in the house have been broken. Are you then a utensil? No, but a free power of will. What then is given to you in answer to this? If you are like a wolf, you must bite in return and throw more stones. But if you consider what is proper for a man, 
Examine your storehouse. See with what faculties you came into the world. Have you the disposition of a wild beast? Have you the disposition of revenge for an injury? When is a horse wretched? When he is deprived of his natural faculties? Not when he cannot crow like a cock, but when he cannot run. When is a dog wretched? Not when he cannot fly, but when he cannot track his game. Is then a man also unhappy in this way? Not because he cannot strangle lions or embrace statues, for he did not come into the world in the possession of certain powers from nature for this purpose, but because he has lost his probity and his fidelity. People ought to meet and lament such a man for the misfortunes into which he has fallen, not indeed to lament because a man has been born or has died, but because it has happened to him in his lifetime. To have lost the things which are his own, not that which he received from his father, not his land and house and his inn and his slaves, for not one of these things is a man's own, but all belong to others, are servile and subject to account, at different times given to different persons by those who have them in their power. But I mean the things which belong to him as a man, the marks in his mind with which he came into the world. Such as we seek also on coins, and if we find them, we approve of the coins, and if we do not find the marks, we reject them. What is the stamp on this Cistercius? The stamp of Trajan. Present it. It is the stamp of Nero. Throw it away. It cannot be accepted. It is counterfeit. So also in this case, what is the stamp of his opinions? It is gentleness, a sociable disposition, a tolerant temper, a disposition to mutual affection. Produce these qualities. I accept them. I consider this man a citizen. I accept him as a neighbor, a companion in my voyages. Only see that he has not Nero's stamp. Is he passionate? Is he full of resentment? Is he fault-finding? If the whim seizes him, does he break the heads of those who come in his way? Why then did you say that he is a man? Is everything judged by the bare form? If that is so, say that the form in wax is all apple, and has the smell and the taste of an apple. But the external figure is not enough. Neither then is the nose enough and the eyes to make the man. But he must have the opinions of a man. Here is a man who does not listen to reason, who does not know when he is refuted. He is an ass. In another man, the sense of shame has become dead. He is good for nothing. He is anything rather than a man. This man seeks whom he may meet and kick or bite, so that he is not even a sheep or an ass, but a kind of wild beast. What then would you have me to be despised? By whom? By those who know you. And how and how shall those who know you despise a man who is gentle and modest? Perhaps you mean by those who do not know you. What is that to you? For no other artisan cares for the opinion of those who know not his art. But they will be more hostile to me for this reason. Why do you say me? Can any man injure your will, or prevent you from using in a natural way the appearances which are presented to you? In no way can he. Why then are still disturbed? And why do you choose to show yourself afraid? And why do you not come forth and proclaim that you are at peace with all men, whatever they may do, and laugh at those chiefly who think that they can harm you? These slaves, you can say, know not either who I am nor where lies my good or my evil, because they have no access to the things which are mine. In this way, also, those who occupy a strong city mock the besiegers. What trouble these men are now taking for nothing! Our wall is secure. We have food for a very long time, and all other resources. These are the things which make a city strong and impregnable. But nothing else than his opinions makes a man's soul impregnable. For what wall is so strong, or what body is so hard, or what possession is so safe, or what honor so free from assault, 
All things everywhere are perishable, easily taken by assault, and if any man in any way is attached to them, he must be disturbed. Expect what is bad. He must fear, lament, find his desires disappointed, and fall into things which he would avoid. Then do we not choose to make secure the only means of safety which are offered to us? And do we not choose to withdraw ourselves from that which is perishable and servile, and to labor at the things which are imperishable and by nature free? And do we not remember that no man either hurts another or does good to another, but that a man's opinion about each thing is that which hurts him, is that which overturns him? This is fighting. This is civil discord. This is war. That which made Eteocles and Polynices enemies was nothing else than this opinion which they had about royal power, their opinion about exile, that the one is the extreme of evils, the other the greatest good. Now this is the nature of every man to seek the good, to avoid the bad. Temperance is the first step of virtue, which is the beginning of moral perfection. Use things, not people. Love people, not things. This too shall pass, ancient Greek proverb. Spend your money on the things money can buy. Spend your time on the things money can't buy. Give a man a purpose worth living for, and he can survive in any situation. Your ability to communicate is an important tool in your pursuit of your goals, whether it is with your family, your co-workers, or your clients and customers. Les Brown Where there shall neither roarer be nor harlot. Why so? As thou dost purpose to live, when thou hast retired thyself to some such place, where neither roarer nor harlot is, so mayest thou hear. And if they will not suffer thee, then mayest thou leave thy life rather than thy calling. But so as one that doth not think himself anyways wronged, only as one would say, Here is a smoke, I will out of it. And what a great matter is this. Now till some such thing force me out, I will continue free. Neither shall any man hinder me to do what I will, and my will shall ever be by the proper nature of a reasonable and sociable creature, regulated and directed. Everyone hears only what he understands. People of higher morality do not consider themselves moral. Therefore, they have the highest morality. The greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. Ronald Reagan It is unrealistic to expect people to see you as you see yourself. Before a new chapter is begun, the old one has to be finished. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control of your ego. Jocko Willing. that the Deity oversees all things. When a person asked him how a man could be convinced that all his actions are under the inspection of God, he answered, Do you not think that all things are united in one? I do, the person replied. Well, do you not think that earthly things have a natural agreement and union with heavenly things? I do. And how else so regularly as if by God's command? When he bids the plants to flower, do they flower? When he bids them to send forth shoes,